Hi guys, we're going to review uh, the Amata TP-Link app for Android. Uh, when you launch it, first thing you will see is how many sites you have controllers set up. Uh, we only have one here. And we're going to be opening that up now. After connected, we're on the main screen showing our st statistics. Uh, APs are access points. We have 11 connected, 0 pending, 0 disconnected, and 0 isolated. Clients, we have 6 users and 10 guests. Uh, clients of Fonridge, we have Fonridge Wi-Fi, which is the main connection for everybody. The CON1 is a hidden SSID that's transmitted by one of the towers to interconnect to another tower. And the clubhouse is internal to the clubhouse with a separate password. Uh, scroll on down here, we'll see current usage top 10 APs. These uh, numbers here of 16 clients and traffic, um, it's basically a running total of uh, 24 hours. So top, tower 171 at the top of the list in 24 hours is used 2.6 gigabytes and you can go on down the list and see. Uh, this is a quick look they call it which is the most active AP. So right now 171, site, the tower on site 171 in the RV park is the most active with the 2.4 gigabytes download. This shows most active client is desktop. And like I said, this is a 24-hour window. And then all-time top computer is Norm's computer at uh, 118 gigabytes. But this is more than um, 24 hours. This is, uh, in fact, it says right there in 20 days. Okay. Um, recent activity uh, in megabytes. Uh, this is a window of 11 o'clock to 11 o'clock. This is 24 hours. And you can see at night time it was very slow. And then 7 o'clock it started peaking up. 8 o'clock it peaked way up and it's come back down now at 11. And these are the number of clients that we have. This is total users and guests. I'm back over here on the users and guests. And uh, this site uses a portal. A portal is a... Uh, way of controlling access to your Wi-Fi that are used by RV parks and motels or hotels and sometimes uh, grocery stores and public places that have Wi-Fi. It's set up so that uh, before you go out to the internet, either you're shown a fat flash page that you have to check on and say, yeah, I agree to behave myself, or else it also will maybe prompt you for a password or a code. Uh, this Farn Ridge site, we use a voucher. The voucher automatically expires in 14 days from the time it's activated. As soon as you connect up to the Wi-Fi, you're shown as a user. Uh, you cannot get out to the internet. You can only be uh, you can only access the uh, the login page or any series of pages that the the uh, manager sets up that has given public access to. 10 guests are people who have already successfully entered the, uh, the voucher numbers and now uh, don't have to enter them anymore until the voucher expires. The six users sometimes are a little con um, con confusing because actually I can tell right now that two of them, because right down in the middle of the screen under current, uh, where it says final is Wi-Fi 14, CON1 is 1 and Clubhouse is 1. I know that CON1 is one user and Clubhouse is one user. Neither one of those are required to have a voucher. So that means that basically we have four devices or four users that uh, have not successfully entered a voucher number and 10 people who have. Um, it's quite common to see that uh, you could have had your phone or tablet set to automatically connect to Fine Ridge, but you've never bothered to uh, to enter the voucher 
uh, number. So it will just show up as that. That's the most common thing that we see. Next, I'm going to collect, select the APs at the top of the window here. And you will see all of the different APs that we have, access points. Um, clubhouse inside, this is outside, gate, and uh, the feed for going up to the shed, top of the hill. And we can scroll on down. If we had one that was disconnected, it would say disconnected uh, and be red. Um, we have uh, two different styles. This uh, one at the top is actually the inside, actually three different styles because the one at the top is an inside EAP 110. Uh, this clubhouse outside is, uh, I'm going to select this now, is one of the original EAP 110s. Um, and let me see how many guests I have. Oh, nobody's connected to it. And nope, we have three people right now that are connected as users. So these are three of the four that were not able to uh, to be connected. One is an Amazon, which very likely is an Amazon um, streaming device. Uh, and the other is unknown, and this is a desktop. I'm going to go back and go back again. Uh, go down here to the, here's the shed. This is one of the newer outdoor devices, and this is actually connected via what they call the mesh, which is a wireless connection down to the uh, feed from uh, the bottom of the hill in the campground. Uh, the uplink is what's called the access to the internet, and it's shown here as wireless. I'm going to open that up. And uh, it just tells me my signal strength and what channel I'm using. And this hop over here, zero, means that I'm, I'm connecting up to it uh, with zero hops. Uh, there's nothing in between me and the main uh, internet access. Um, users are right now on that one is zero and zero. This tells you before you even have to open it up, which is a nice feature. And uh, let me go to 147. That may have some users. This shows me how um, active the channels are uh, and if I have a channel contingency problem and see what I have. Okay, I only have one user on that one also. But anyway, you get the idea of what we can look at. The next thing would be clients and uh, these are the different clients. Good feature about this is that actually it tells you how much um, each client has downloaded and I can actually sort it by download. So right now you see that this desktop is downloaded 575 megabyte, megabytes in three hours. This Galaxy Tab uh, is 314 in one day and you can go on down the list. Um, you can actually open that up. It tells you which tower they were on, what band they were using. And naturally, they are a guest, not a user, because if they were a user, they wouldn't be able to download anything. And um, <laughs> if I saw somebody doing something they shouldn't, uh, which really don't monitor that, but you can hit a button here and say remove them or reconnect them if uh, they do, uh, if they were, for instance, if they had a medical problem or something and they were staying over, past the 14 days I could hit that and each time I hit it it renews it for another 24 hours okay well um settings we really don't have a lot of this is very very technical part of it and doesn't really uh, pertain to the normal usage good thing about this is um, we get notifications or rather I do and the uh, staff can get notifications and when they do they can look at this and click on the AP, scroll down to see which one is down, plus the fact the notification, if only one device is down, the notification tells you which device that is. And um, since we've upgraded the system, most of the time in 5 to 15 minutes, uh, the system will uh, figure out that one of the uh, towers is offline, attempt to communicate with it, and if it's not back up in 15 minutes on its own, then it requires some interaction from the staff to uh, 
go down and check and make sure it has power. Nobody's turned it off by accident or the GFI is tripped, so it's lost power. Or maybe we actually have a hardware problem. Well, I hope you find this interesting and uh, understand a little bit more about how uh, the app works and what it can and can't do. Uh, as you see, there's no way for what to uh, go in and say, okay, you've been going to this site or that site, so there isn't like Big Brother's watching or anything. Anyway, have a great time, and thanks for watching.